doing today. So my float story um, started about four years ago. Um, I really didn't have any idea what floating was. Um, I'm going to try to not let this massive timer affect me a little bit. <laughs> um, but I had my first float over in Samana in Denver. Um, beautiful facility. Shout out, Heather. Where are they, Paul? Um, but uh, it wasn't necessarily a good experience, actually. I find that's pretty common sometimes. <laughs> kind of brought some stuff up that I was unaware I needed to kind of resolve. Um, but I wanted to kind of start with an overview because I'm like, how the hell do I summarize four years in 10 minutes? So um, in summary, in 2019, I had my first float. I quit my job two months later. Like, I was not messing around. But I think there was a lot more going on that I didn't realize um, within my personal life uh, that needed some attention. And I think by pouring myself into an industry where I can help others, it absolutely helped me. Um, and I think that's why a lot of us kind of do it, not in selfish ways, but in a way of, like, we lift each other up, right? That's a lot about what this community is about. Um, so in, I quit my job. Uh, I really didn't talk to very many people about it because they literally thought I lost my mind. Um, but when I, when I tried to explain it into words, it's one of those things where I felt extremely led. And I don't even usually speak that way, especially four years ago. Um, but there was something, uh, there was some sort of pull that I couldn't ignore. And I trust me, I tried for a little bit. Um, but the more research that I did, um, and you know, the community being so loving as they are, um, I after my first float. Um, I called Samana back and I was like, is your owner available? And I'm like, I'm not complaining, there's nothing wrong. I absolutely loved the experience, but it's speaking to me and it's not stopping. So, and they're like, oh, actually we are hosting the float center in four weeks. And I'm like, I think I could, I live in Michigan. Sorry, I didn't put say that yet. First time speaking, so bear with me. <laughs> um, so I live in Michigan. So I was visiting my sister out in Denver. She was going through a really hard time. And it, um, I also found out in 2019 that I'm an empath. I didn't know what that meant either. Um, but knowing yourself and knowing what all of that means absolutely helps you navigate the world. Um, and it helps you navigate it with other people too. Because some I wasn't raised in an environment that was very open to that language, um, intuition, any of that. So the float tank for me woke me up. Like, I was just like, oh, that's what it's like to have a nervous system that's calm. I think that was the biggest thing for me as I was like, something's not right. Like why did that 60, 90 minutes, actually they do 90 minutes out there. Why did that 90 minutes impact me in such a deep way? So it got me very curious. So I started really diving into self help, self-care. I started therapy. As soon as I quit my job, I was like, I'm going to start therapy because I think this is going to be the hardest thing I've ever done. And I'm, I was like, I'm 35. I've never owned a business, but I can't, I can't let this go. So um, I really was on a mission. Um, so fast forward uh, a little bit. Um, the pandemic obviously affected it a lot. I had quit my job in November of 2019. Um, and I was just all in. I opened 14 months later, so it was very quick. But we had some glitches, and that's a big part of my story. Um, yes, I'm here in front of you at the float conference, but a lot of my story is um, going in and being a protector for other people through your story. Um, so fast forward to 2020. Um, I was supposed to sign my lease March of, excuse me, March of, uh, March 13th. It was a Friday the 13th. And I was like, nope. <laughs> I don't know if you remember that week, but that was the week the, the World Health Organization was like, a, a, this is a global pandemic. And I'm like, oh, well, it'll be done by December, right? So um, I decided to hold off for four months. Investments dipped. Um, you know, I'm really organized and calculated in that way. It's my type A uh, brain. But um, so I had to do, I didn't want to start on the wrong track. So I halted everything for four months. And then July 2020, um, I signed my five-year lease, which 
I didn't tell anybody that because I just heard there was so much negativity and it was really affecting me, you know, like I was just like, I didn't learn how to block that shit yet. You know what I mean? Um, I'm starting to, and that's why I love this community. I've, I've just opened up to so many things where I'm like, gosh, it's all in me. Everything that I need is here. Um, however, after I signed that uh, five-year lease, I had a four-day panic attack. Um, so I have anxiety you couldn't tell, um, but I'm working through it, and I have my modalities, thank God, for the float center, um, but I had about a four-day panic attack where I could not sleep. Um, all my alarms were going off, and I was like, shit, did I do, is this not what I'm supposed to be doing? Like, I feel like, you know, I've been leading this whole time to this big thing, and I'm going to do it, and I quit my job, and I was there for 12 years and making great money, but there was no fulfillment. There was no I didn't feel, it just felt like I was watching my life or observing my life outside of my body, if that makes sense. I don't know. Um, so anyway, so I finally lease. I have a four-day panic attack. I tell my then-husband, um, I say, take me to the hospital. Something's not right. I just want, before construction starts for two weeks, I just want to know why I'm having these feelings. Like, I'm talking closing the throat elevated heart rate, um, you know, but I was very calm in a way too, because I felt safe, um, but I felt like there was something wrong. I was really picking up on something um, that I couldn't ignore either. So I asked him to take me to the hospital. In July of 2020, it was a weird time in the hospital. Um, I went right up into the urgent care and was I wasn't able to bring him with me because of COVID. So I just told him what I did. I said, I just did something big and I, I haven't slept for four days and I'm not really sure. I just want to have a full, check me out. Like, give me a full workup because I have a business to open and I have a lot to do in two weeks. So I was ready. I'm open as they come. So anyway, um, well, unfortunately, I didn't know at the time that my then husband um, wasn't the person I thought he was. Um, so when I was growing... Um, and focusing on growth, he was scared to death because he, would, he was doing things that he shouldn't have been doing. <sighs> I've never talked about this, especially with a microphone, so bear with me. Um, but he had mentioned something to the girl outside, and it was very odd to me in that moment because I was like, what did he just say? Because the girl went to the um, girl behind the counter and whispered something to her, and I, that didn't sit well with me, and I felt like a little bit strange, and I, I didn't like that. But I was very open. I'm like, here's my my family medical history, mental health history, like, check it all. Well, as soon as I got off the elevator, I knew what floor I was on. So I went to the psychiatric ward for seven days. Um, that was interesting. I'm going to write a book for sure because I, the, that experience was wild. Um, but I took it like a fucking champion. Like I embraced it. Um, I immediately thought, well, I called my husband. And I said, what did you say? Um, and he didn't want to tell me. So two years after, uh, at two years after that, he finally confessed when I caught him with this other mess that we'll get to in a second. But, um, he told them I was seeing things that weren't there. But unfortunately, if you're with somebody that doesn't have any depth there with like signs or pulls or like, you know, self-growth and, and they have secrets, it's, it's, it's scary. it was scaring him. So um, he was really just sort of prepping the, the end, I think. But um, to get back to the point of sharing all of this stuff is I made that decision that day, um, July 2020, in on that floor of like, I'm going to turn this into something good. And I'm going to work my ass off to um, help people get out of situations like that. Because I found myself in a situation where nobody saw it, you know. Um, when, you're, when your lawyer tells you to take an STD test uh, after you catch your husband doing what he was doing for over a decade, um, that's heavy. That I didn't know, you know. Um, but floating, <laughs> let's tie it back to floating. Floating woke me up, though. I it, it really allowed me to like take time for myself and understand that like the feelings that I was having weren't normal, and I do need to do something about it. But you've got to protect yourself. You got to watch who you surround yourself with, because you could have so much good and so much you know, drive to do the right thing and be a good person. And if you're with somebody that doesn't have that, that outlook, 
they can really hold it against you, and I feel like that's what happened. That being said, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not afraid of the word mental health. Um, I definitely take it seriously, absolutely, now. Um, you know, and I, I encourage everyone to do that. If, listen to your body. Um, I never, you know, I, I don't not listen to my intuition now. Trust me on that one. Um, so that's something I can really thank him for. Uh, that whole situation has helped me grow so much, and my center is killing it. Um, we've been open for three years. Like I said, I, it was a fast, I think it was a divine thing that happened where it was just like, something big's going to happen. You need this space of healing for yourself. I don't know what I would have done if I was at Quicken Loans going through that mess. I think it would have been really a whole lot harder. So um, I was able to use the float tanks, the massage room, the sauna, and it helped. And, and it, I walk the walk, and people can feel that. Um, people walk into my center, and it's like, we know not everybody has a, a nice, calm household to go home to, right? So just even strangers, like just smile at a stranger. Like just, you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what they've been through or what they have to handle five minutes after that smile they give you. And that can, that ripple effect is what it's about. So anyway, um, thank you for letting me share this story. Um, this isn't going to be the end for me. I have a pull to, to do um, coaching and personal development coaching. Um, and that's something I'm definitely going to pursue as well as speaking, um, <laughs> even though I was a little shaky today, but got those kinks out. Um, speaking and writing a book and helping mentor women out of situations that absolutely they don't belong in or deserve. So thank you. Thank you.